Thank you. Once again, everyone, and a very warm welcome to this very important discussion, which calls to attention the rising cost of global cybersecurity. Our panel will highlight the implications of the failure to reach a minimum adequate level of cybersecurity. Here are some key facts. $2 trillion is the estimated cost of cybercrime in 2021. That's up from 400 million in 2015, a significant rise. 77% of cyber attacks are due to human failure, not technological failure. We have five to 10 years before quantum computing, computing potentially becomes commercially available and that will inevitably overturn today's encryption standards and we did hear Dr. Kaku's warnings about the challenges that this will bring in the first session this morning. Professor Ibrahim, governments must really feel the cost of cybersecurity deeply. How much does the cost of cyber threats really strain governments? Really strain government. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellencies. I begin by appreciating the effort of uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for organizing and hosting the Global Cyber Security Forum, and uh, secondly, for inviting us to be part and parcel of uh, the event. Uh, the effort is highly commendable, and uh, also the quality of uh, the speakers and the discussion taking place is also really encouraging. Uh, that effort is uh, highly commendable and also uh, we are most appreciative for that. Secondly, on the question on the cost of cyber security, particularly the pressure on government, uh, this is something that is very clear because uh, as you all know, cyber security is more of a, a proactive approach. Secondly, government is the custodian of, uh, in most places, or the regulator of uh, data and information for citizens, for private sector, for public sector, you will discover that government is the regulator. So it is the responsibility of government to ensure that information or data under its control is protected, is private, and is confidential. Thirdly, if you look at globally, the percentage of a cyber attack and also the malware being created is highly worrisome. A research conducted by the Chief Information Security Officer of HP has indicated that after every 4.2 seconds globally, a new malware is being released in order to compromise our cyber security. In addition, if you compute this 4.2 seconds for one week, you will discover that every week 144,000 malware applications are being released. And it is the responsibility of government to set standards and guidelines to regulate the private and public sector and ensure that there is no compromise to our cyber security. So it is because of this you will discover that government has a lot to do and also government spends huge amount of money in order to ensure that our cyberspace is protected and is secure. Furthermore, if you look at it also, for example, you will discover that government sometimes spend over 22% of its entire IT budget to cyber security. Today is a global practice. In each and every developed or developing country you visit, government must have a law in place or policy for cyber security. This policy doesn't implement itself. 
government must provide budgetary provision for that. Secondly, government establishes national cybersecurity center. We have a world-class national cybersecurity here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It requires money to do that. Thirdly, you must ensure that you employ cybersecurity experts. And if you look at their package globally, you will see it's very high. And day in, day out, the demand for cybersecurity experts is increasing. If you look at the statistics released recently, you will discover that the demand for cybersecurity this year is much, much higher than next year. And you will discover that government plays a significant role in doing that. Like in 2022, by July, the report indicated that we need a minimum of uh, uh, 8.1 million cybersecurity experts globally. And there is a huge burden of gov on government to ensure the provision of this number. As it is today, we have around 4.7 million professionals. And still, there is a vacancy for 3.4 million. And you will discover in each country, government plays a significant role in ensuring that we produce cyber security experts that will defend our cyberspace. And lastly, cyber security being proactive, and secondly, cyber security could be implemented outside your budget. You have a budgetary provision for 2022, and accidentally there is a cyber attack in your cyber space. Whether there is a budgetary provision or not, government must be proactive and generate money to ensure that cyberspace is defended. So the defense sometimes could even go outside your budgetary provision because it could be an emergency case. So because of this, it is difficult really for government and it becomes necessary, particularly the more people online are increasing, the need for defending their cyberspace is increasing. According to the United Nations Department of Economics and uh, Social Affairs, by 15th of November this year, in the next one week, the world population could be 8 billion people. Today we are 7.99 billion. So this number is increasing. And the percentage of cyber security, cyber crime is increasing. And people online, their number is increasing by the day. As it is today, we have around 5.3 billion people online. And we have approximately, most probably, around uh, uh, maybe 1.7 to 8 people that are offline. So you will discover the percentage is increasing because we have around 66 to 67 percent people online globally. So, so these are some of the reasons why the cost of cyber security is increasing and the pressure uh, usually is on government to set standards, to set guidelines, to establish National Cyber Security Center, to establish cyber security incidents response team, to train citizens, to build their capacity to become professionals in cyber security, among many others. And inevitably, governments will have to increase their spending with the rise in population and the rise in cybersecurity attacks. You talked about the strain on governments, but could you enlighten us about the strain of cyber attacks on individuals, businesses, the private sector? I think uh, the pressure of uh, cyber attack on individuals and the private sector is also highly worrisome, and the percentage is also increasing by the day, based on the earlier statement I have uh, made. And uh, secondly, also, if you look at the cost being spent, or the cost that is being lost through cybercrime will justify that, because individuals and private sector are part and parcel of our global community. So any percentage being spent or being lost because of cybercrime, definitely they are part and parcel of it. According to Accenture, by 2023, just next year, most probably the cost or the total amount to be lost through cybercrime could be 5.2 trillion USD. If you look at 5.2 trillion USD, it's more than 
of the entire gross domestic product of a, a country like China with a population of 1.44 billion people. And it's more than 173% the entire GDP of Africa with 52 countries and a population of uh, more than 1.3 billion. And based on the statistics mentioned by our colleague, uh, which has also been released by Cyber Security Ventures, this amount is predicted by 2025 in the next three years to reach 10.5 trillion USD. So look at the prediction from 2023 to 2025, almost double of the cost to be lost. This is a clear justification that individuals are losing huge amount of money through that. Private sector is also losing. And if you look at it as well, uh, the spending by private sector only to secure their system usually is approximately around 2% of their total IT project annually. This is only to ensure that they are protected, not even the loss they account for, only to ensure they are protected. So if you look at the trend, it's definitely increasing by the day. And also, according to Accenture, in each and every 39 seconds, cyber attack takes place in the world. So by implication, within two minutes daily, you will discover there are three attacks approximately. And these attacks are either targeted to individuals, targeted to either private sector or public sector. And today, if you look at the largest economy globally, there is no doubt in most countries you will discover that the economy is dominated by the private sector with the exemption of maybe countries like, countries like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, you will discover. So because of this huge percentage of what is being spent in cybersecurity and the loss that is being computed, a significant percentage is either coming from private sector or individuals because they are part and parcel of our larger community globally. In addition, what I think... Uh, is critical here, based on what uh, other speakers have said, is there is need for us to try to attain cyber security maturity. And most importantly, to have cyber security immunity, where the cost of the attack is more expensive than the damage to be done by the attack. So we must reach a situation where people, even when they attack, what they are going to lose from the attack is even higher than the damage or the cost to the institution they have attacked. Unfortunately, we have run out of time for this panel. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So thank, you. thank you. And thank you to our wonderful audience for sharing the room with us. Thank you so much. It is our pleasure. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. we will so begin much. the thank panel you. discussion. Thank you. No nation left Grand behind. How and why nations should accelerate cybersecurity development? Please welcome our panelists.